And I grew up in Detroit, mm -hmm. Michigan. And I didn't grow up in a Christian uh, family. Okay. Uh, my mother, she meant well the things that she taught us, but it wasn't what we needed to be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother ran numbers, my stepfather ran numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, in the neighborhood that I grew up, the role models that I had were uh, people that were gamblers, pimps, and prostitutes. And Sounds like my childhood. Yes. <laughs> and Amen. when I grew up, mm -hmm. that's all I seen, and I wanted to be like them. Mm -hmm. uh, those were my heroes. Uh, the people that I seen that were exposed to being Christians, they seem to have religion, but not have a personal relationship okay. with, with God. There was not a lot of evangelists in our neighborhoods. There was not a lot of people telling us about Christ. Mm -hmm. And I did not understand about Jesus. Uh, mm -hmm. I dropped out of school at 16 years old, and I went to New York City to try to learn how to, be, to live a life of crime. Okay. And just like anybody that goes to any university like Michigan State or Michigan University or what have you, I went to Street University to learn the trades that I knew that I was taught as a survive. child to survive. Oh, right. And uh, anytime you fell a grade there, it can cost you your life mm -hmm. or time in prison. But I was determined to learn everything about the streets. But the Bible lets us know if the, the wicked are like the troubled sea that cannot mm -hmm. find rest. Right. The Bible says, there's no peace, saith my Lord, with the wicked. Mm -hmm. After I learned how to rob people, to con people, to uh, mm -hmm. put women on corners and do those things that people who disobey the law do, I was still miserable. I didn't have any peace with inside me, and I knew that there was something missing in my life. I wanted to better my life. I, I wanted to be a better person, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to be. Nobody took the time to let me know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten That's son, right. that whoever is a believer of him shall not mm -hmm. perish. And I was perishing. Uh, the Bible lets us know that the mm -hmm. psalmist said in Isaiah 58 and 13, the wicked go astray as soon as they're born. I was astray. Okay. I knew it was a God. I could look at the stars and everything, and I knew it was a God, but I didn't know why wouldn't he talk to me. And I started trying to fill my life mm -hmm. with drugs and with money and with things of that to try to fill this empty void, but I never seemed to be able to fill it. Okay. And... I ended up on drugs and crack cocaine, and, and I ended up committing an armed robbery mm -hmm. and a attempted murder. And I was glad. I always tell people that I was not arrested, but I was more rescued mm -hmm. because, and I'm sure you can relate Amen. to what I'm saying. Yes, I can. There were so many people that were out to take my life. I was, mm. uh, you know, I was just down in the gutter. Mm. Paul said that he was chief center. And I feel that I was chief center in the day that we're living in. Amen. But I wanted to get better. I'm just, I understand just like a leopard that's unclean. He sees the spots. He sees the leprosy. But he doesn't see the cure. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a better person. But I did not know how. I was glad to be away in prison to be, to be, uh, 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 be away from I could not harm anybody. Which is where we met right. in prison. Right. Just wanted, wanted to know that. Yes. And we have been there, so it's not like we don't identify. We 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 done been at yes. the bottom. Yes. Yes. And being in prison, sometimes it's um, some people think that that's your lowest point. But let me ask you a question: um, Is that the lowest point a person can have in their life going to prison? Because some people seem to think that, you know, if you come out of prison, that's oh man, that's bad, and and they treat it like that's the lowest point of your life. And let me just say this: with God. And, and, and I know you're going to ask this right. Is that the worst thing that could happen to a person going to prison? No, the worst thing I think, prison for me was 
my Jonah experience. You remember how Jonah was, mm -hmm. he disobeyed God and yeah. went to Tarshish and God gave, uh, prepared a, a fish mm -hmm. for Jonah. I believe God did, with his infinite wisdom and knowledge, mm -hmm. knew what it was going to take for me to be saved. He knew my mm -hmm. heart that I wanted to be saved. I wanted, I wanted a relationship with him, but he knew from the beginning that it was going to take prison. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, one scripture, one of the psalmists said, it is good that I've been afflicted, that I may learn thy ways. People don't realize that they're in a spiritual prison now. There's a lot of people who never broke a traffic law, mm -hmm. who never cheated on their taxes, mm -hmm. who never did any wrong far as society is concerned, but never g gave their life to Jesus. To me, they're in a worse prison. Mm. Because at prison, I can see the bars and the things that had me bound. Mm -hmm. But in a spiritual prison, they can't see. No. <laughs> They're bound. That's right. Yeah, but the right. Bible lets us know, as we well know, mm -hmm. who the sun sets free is free indeed. Yeah. It's sitting there. Can, 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 can you get it? Yeah. I'll, I'll give a little story. Tony, this happened after I met you. Oh. You know, um, okay. You know, when we're in prison, a lot of times people don't realize they give you what you call a ride out and mm -hmm. they take you to different um, institutions. Mm -hmm. And um, one day when I was, uh, I went to a different institution, um, which mm -hmm. was up at Savo, not, not Savo, what's the other one? Uh, I went to a different uh, one at, um, well, one of the prisons. And one of the gentlemen, I seen these brothers, mm -hmm. they were praying in a circle. Mm -hmm. and oh, the famous circle. And yeah. they were praying. And when they got finished praying, I, mm -hmm. I joined them. And they were telling me that they needed somebody to pastor them. Mm -hmm. And we had our own church service, the brothers, in, in, inside the prison. And that night, the Lord gave me a dream. Mm -hmm. And in that dream, the Lord told me, he said, Son, I want you to get a shoe shine box made. And I want you to put Acts 238 on it. I want you to put Romans 10:13, and um, I want you to put Praise the Lord on this. Oh man! And I want you to put John 3:16 in the front, and a cross be made right here. Okay. And on this shoe shine box, son, I want you to take the shoe shine box mm -hmm. around the prison, shoe shine box. and I want you to shine shoes, and tell them when people try to pay you for it, tell them. Don't give me, don't take any money for it, mm -hmm. but tell them, praise the Lord, this shine is on Jesus and witness to me about Amen. it. Amen. Praise And God. the good thing about the box is that mm -hmm. not only did God want me mm -hmm. to witness to the uh, prisoners, but the officers as well. Mm -hmm. And he let me know, he says, son, if you want, you better take her all your life. Amen. But if you want to be a part of the kingdom, you have to learn to give. He says, I washed my disciples' feet. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about being a Christian. Amen. It's being a servant. So. And it was so good, brother, I can take this box and shine mm -hmm. them brother's shoes and just tell them mm -hmm. stories about the thief on the cross and mm -hmm. how Jesus told him that he was going to be with him in paradise and told him that mm -hmm. God loved them so much that he wanted me to shine their shoes. Mm. And maybe some of them didn't go to church all the time, but every time they looked at them pair of shoes <laughs> and they seen them shining, they knew that Jesus loved them. Hey, man, um, be, be, before you go, um, family here, um, your wife and kids. Yes. It, isn't it a little bit, it's so much better now. You know, I mean, y you a responsible person. Are you a father? You're a husband? Yes. And, um, She's a blessed woman. Oh yeah. To have a saved husband. Um, can I say that maybe if she would have married you ten years ago, would you would have been a good husband then? Oh no. <laughs> but that's that. That's what God yeah. does, though. He changes lives and um, uh, he puts families together, and um, he changed your life. He changed my life, and um, we're sitting here today able to tell that. And uh, I'm glad you had me on the show. Now.